Hello, I'm Shannon Harris. Thanks for tuning in to Window in Wilmington. On today's show, we'll tell you about a great volunteer opportunity with RSVP. Chains Inc. will also update us on the work that they're doing in the community. We'll talk about Verndine event on the riverfront and you'll find out what that is and how you can be a part of it. And we'll find out what's happening at Parks and Recreation. But first, the Recorder of Deeds is the repository for all land transaction records, corporate filings, and financing statements in Newcastle County. Michael Kazakowski Sr. joins me now to tell us about the office and how it could help you. Hello again. Well, Mr. good morning, Reporter. Shannon, and <laughs> once again, thank you for having me back. Much I'm glad you could be, be here to talk to us. We um, kind of had an introduction of what the office is for folks who might not be so sure of what it is, and mm -hmm. when you were here the last time, um, we talked about the unique business culture of the office and how your office has worked to um, address the needs of the constituent base better. Yes, and uh, you know, I call it my common sense approach. Uh, when I first became the Recorder of Deeds back in 2002, and I'm saying your Recorder of Deeds because the constituency elects the row officers every four years, and I've been the Recorder since 2002, and what I, what I brought was a business mindset from the private sector because I believe that, that, a, a, that there's no reason why a government entity can't operate like a successful private sector business, and we've done that by focusing on, and I call it my four areas of concentration, Customer service is first, continuous improvement, fiscal responsibility, and educational opportunity. And we kind of touched on that of the, as far as the customer service and continuous mm -hmm. improvement and fiscal responsibility, but we didn't get an opportunity to talk about the educational opportunity. Which is a big part. Now you mm -hmm. have, and it's the ROD educational opportunity, right? Yes. And, and that is your baby well, and to me, in order to engage the citizenry, you need to educate them and inform them, uh, not only about what the office is all about, but provide them the information so they can contact. They, they feel very comfortable in regards to knowing that more than anything, okay, here's their opportunity now that I've seen the one of the focal points is I've seen Mike at a PowerPoint presentation, Senior Center, Civic Association, or they've accessed the web video, or they've actually had received a copy of the brochure either through the PowerPoint presentations when I'm out in the community, or if they've come to the Recorder of Deeds office, we have these out there in the, in the foyer. And of course, basically what all the information that we provide them is not only about the office, how your tax dollars are being spent, how you can better utilize the services, but we give them a breakdown of the document fees, basically what are the document types. We uh, well, let, let me ask you: when a person typically comes to your office, what are the, what are, what business would they be handling in your office? Actually, when in essence, ninety percent of the documents that we record in the Recorder of Deeds office are land records, okay, deeds, mortgages, assignments, and satisfactions. So anything to do with property, I mean, we do have. You know, we do record the, the boards and commissions, if you've been selected by the governor or the county exec to, to, to be on a board, that would be recorded in the Recorder of Deeds Office. We also have prenups, okay, but they're at a minimum, and of course miscellaneous documents. We, if you wanted a document that didn't have uh, as far as any bearing whatsoever on property, but you still wanted it recorded, that could be recorded for safekeeping in a recorded deeds office. If I was coming up there looking for one of the documents that you just mentioned, could I just come up there today and get it, or should I call the office and tell them what I'm looking for to make it a little bit easier? Well, in essence, that's why we have that imaging retrieval system, so you can actually access your information online, okay? But yes, you can come to the office. That was one of the customer service entities that we Im improved on, was we added more workstations, computer stations, and of course, uh, we had sequestered our primary business organization, so now they have their own separate area. We did that very early on in 2002 because we wanted the public to have their access and the industry itself that's using the office daily. Okay, mm -hmm. actually, it's one of the only offices in county government besides public safety that's open seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they have those primary business organizations have a, a key card along they have to go through a background check. Right. The other areas of, of education, after we did the PowerPoint presentation and the brochure, 
we also have put together a, a newsletter and okay. we, we sent this out on a quarterly basis and of course you know the pertinent information in the recorder deeds office is not something that you could generate interest on a quarterly basis so we went from a quarterly to a semi-annual and sometimes in, in essence it depends on it could be a, a once a year right but it's still another way of connecting and providing information we took the PowerPoint presentation I mentioned three of the focal points, PowerPoint, newsletter, brochure. We took the PowerPoint presentation and we decided to reach a much broader audience. I mean, I'll continue to do the presentations in front of the senior centers and civic associations, but I wanted you to have access to the information online. If you're a school teacher, high school, college, the web videos are not only informational, they're educational. Okay, so basically the four web videos, it's all about deeds, okay? The second web video is accessing your information through the imaging retrieval system. So we show you how to do a simple search, okay? The third video is to our primary business organizations. We're trying to save them time and money by reducing redundancy because we can't record a document that's 98% complete. So we point out to them what those redundancies are. A missing EIN number, social security number, but we want to let them know that if they check these documents before they mail them to the recorder deeds office, it's going to save them time and money in recording because if it's not complete, we've got to mail it back. Right, okay? right, right, right. So right. it's saving the county money because we're not mailing them back and it's saving the businesses money because they're getting the documents recorded when they sent them the first time. Right, okay? right. And the last one is the one that I consider to be dear to my heart, okay? Uh, I wanted to give the constituency, especially the first time home buyer, that's never been through a settlement, all right? We actually did a mock settlement. Each video is about four and a half minutes long. The last video is all about deeds, okay? So we have a narrator that's actually explaining each paragraph in the content of your deed. And I think that's interesting. Um, you said for first time home, bu home buyer and also for folks who might be new to the area. Um, you yeah. know, Delaware, you need to have a lawyer when you're going to Absolutely. the settlement table. And I think that mm -hmm. people that move from other states don't know this. That's true. And of course, once again, how do you engage the, the citizenry, especially in our technological age that we live in? More people are definitely utilizing the web. And that's why I felt it to be so important. So that was my fourth focal point of educational opportunity. The last one is Junior Achievement of Delaware. In JA, I wanted to reach out to the young students, the fourth and fifth graders through high school, because I see county employment as not just jobs, but as career, okay? And the reason for that is that because when you look at the wage, when you look at the collective bargaining agreements, because I would say 80-some uh, percent of the county government's makeup is organized labor, mm -hmm. okay? The employees are represented from five different locals. And one of the unique things about working for a government entity is the fact that you're providing service. So that's why I emphasize customer service first. But these are our tax dollars. So we can go ahead and provide not only the customer service, but also look at creating those transparencies that are necessary, but starting at a younger age. Mm -hmm. These students now, there's a public safety kiosk and there's also a recorder deeds kiosk. And these students, these fourth and fifth graders, when they're been prepared by their teacher, takes about a month to get the students ready for that one day event at JA. Have you been to JA? I have and I've and, actually seen your kiosk. And you see what the students, mm -hmm. what their responsibilities are. They have specific job descriptions along with the various tasks that they need to perform. But the most important task they perform in the recorder deeds kiosk in BizTown, in JA World, okay? Customer service. Well, they, that's customer <laughs> service because they record all the leases of all the businesses that are in BizTown. Wow, So, okay. you know, these students, when they become of age and they're at the point where they have to make a decision on what they want to do with their life, I hope that they remember that uh, don't, you know, don't fail to recognize that working for, for, for government is rewarding.
So if anybody wanted to find out more about the office, they wanted to look at the online web videos, what mm -hmm. do they need to do? Well, if they want to go to the website, they would go to deeds.nccde.org. And we had just amended that because the county government had just upgraded their platform. Mm -hmm. so it used to be nccde.org is the access to the government homepage, and then that's another way that you can access it. Then you would just go to the department and click on the department. Before we leave, what do you want everybody to know about your office? Well, I want, I want the constituency to know that you have a gatekeeper that not only understands the complexities of the industry, the real estate industry, but also I'm, I'm a taxpayer to understand what you're really looking for. You're looking for a person that's going to provide customer service, continuous improvement, fiscal responsibility, and educational opportunity. And also think outside the box. Right. One of the other services that we provide is that if you remember having a conversation with the recorder, either be at, the, at a PowerPoint presentation or one-on-one, -on -one, okay, is that I remember that Mike Kozakowski said, if I ever had an issue, and it didn't have to be recorder deeds to contact him. And I love the email because it's a paper trail, okay? Ah. So what we have done is we created an intergovernmental network since 2006, and this way, if your issue is local, county, state, or federal government, we're going to take ownership of your issue, and we're going to reach out to that contact person that we've, have, that we've acquired. And if we don't have a contact person for your specific issue, you're going to find we're one. going to find one. <laughs> and we want to make sure we're kept in the loop until your issue's either been resolved or it's been explained why it couldn't be resolved. And as you work on other programs further down the line, I know you're working on something that helps seniors with properties and you also help with the service men and women. Yeah, we so amended the Delaware Code. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, the DD-214s is the most important military record. And we decided back in 2006 when there was a movement across the country to protect our service men and women's records from identity theft. Because you figure, here they are, they're protecting our freedom. Here's something that we want to make sure that they don't fall into the hands of an identity thief. Okay, so what we've done is had the Delaware Code amended and the recorder deeds office in all three counties had transferred those documents down to the Veterans Affairs Commission and they're the gatekeeper. Very good. Well, it's always a pleasure seeing you and having you on the show. Well, thank you for having me on and you know how much I enjoy being with you. Ah, Take care. I love hearing you say okay. that. All right, all right. thank okay. you. Next up, RSVP when we return. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry's still speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. Once you've got your GED diploma, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell him. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? He needs something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Today, school kids rely on the internet for so many things. Homework, math, research. But what about kids who don't have internet at home? Hello, I'm Theo Gregory, Wilmington City Council President. The internet is essential. As many as 80% of low-income families do not have access at home, including many right here in Wilmington. So help bridge this gap by supporting local broadband adoption programs. Let's get more students and families connected to the power of the internet.
RSVP, a volunteer program for adults age 55 and older, is the largest organized senior volunteer effort in the nation. Debbie Vandiver and Scott Martin are here now with RSV programs and information. And the last time I saw Scott, I was learning how to get up off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> we may have some new tricks for you today. Oh, wow. I'll be on the floor again? My goodness. Don't get happy over there, Paul. You see, you want to owe him too, right? <laughs> he said it was awesome. So I'm glad you both could be here today. Um, so I know you have some new things that are going on, and actually you're going to you're implementing some additional programs, right? We are. Um, I'd like to talk about our project that we have for September 11th. You know, as we know, this is the 13th anniversary of that terrible day, and every year our SVP tries to do a project commemorating that um, the lives that were lost. And um, this year, as we have done for the last five years, we are going to be collecting items for Stockings for Soldiers. Stockings for Soldiers is a local nonprofit that every year sends um, holiday stockings to our troops overseas. And this year, um, they're hoping to send 10,000 stockings to troops in Afghanistan. And we are collecting some of the goodies that will be going into those stockings. Now, Debbie, even though the project starts on September 11th, it's ongoing into it is, October, it right? It is. It goes actually through the very early December. They mm -hmm. ship out the last boxes in early December. Um, and our project sort of gives them a kickstart to supplies um, so that they begin. The actual assembly of those stockings begins in mid-October. So, so what are we looking to put into the stockings? Oh, we want to put in um, just things that you might put into a, a, a stocking for a, a young adult. Um, socks, we are, every stocking has a pair of tube socks, everybody needs those. Yeah, um, yeah. And little snack items, ramen noodles are very popular, um, individual sized um, packets of food, candy, um, uh, those hand warmers. Right, yes. right. Yes. Yeah. Um, and also, if people are interested in sewing the stocking, each stocking is handmade, which I think is just so is incredible. Nice. And um, there's a pattern for that on the Stockings for Soldiers website, stockingsforsoldiers.org. And um, people are welcome to, to make those. Um, and then they have little elves at the uh, <laughs> assembly. Um, <laughs> time that put the first name of each soldier um, on the stocking. So when the stockings are delivered, the soldier has something with his first name and um, it, which makes it especially personal. And, and I want, have you ever, has any of the soldiers ever contact anyone? How, how do they feel when they get these things? They I, have. Yeah. And um, there are wonderful, wonderful emails and notes and photos on the website that show the appreciation um, the soldiers have for being remembered. Ad additionally, in the stocking are, are usually holiday greeting cards. And this year, we've partnered with uh, Teach for America, one of our AmeriCorps programs. And the students um, in some of those classes are making handmade cards with um, their appreciation and holiday greetings to our troops. So um, it just seems like a very fitting way to, to uh, memorialize September 11th mm -hmm. and, um, and it's also if anyone has extra time over the holidays it is a lot of fun to go and help assemble. I'm sure it is. Yes. You meet a lot of great people too. Yes. And you're doing everything for a great cause. And we have barrels located throughout the state and the information about those locations is on our um, volunteerdelaware.org website. All right, so we want everybody to check that out. And now we're moving on from Stockings for Soldiers. Now Scott's here to talk to us about, what you got going on, Scott? Tai Chi or something? <laughs> Are we gonna do something today? You well, if you want to, we can. Um, I do wanna do some. <laughs> well, do not throw me on the ground. Nothing dangerous. The last time I was here, we were talking about Matter of Bounds, which is RCP's program to address uh, falls among the elderly, which is a huge problem as we discussed then. Um, Debbie believes, and I believe with her, that different people need different approaches right. to fall prevention. And so we wanted to offer another option that maybe was heavier in exercise and maybe not quite so focused on problem solving and the kind of things we do in Matter of Bounds. 
So for that alternative, we turned to the east, to China, and uh, Tai Chi Chuan, which is a, uh, started as a martial art about 400 years ago, and most people know it today as a wellness exercise, but what they don't realize is that it's also very good for fall prevention. Really? Yeah. Um, you know, there are a number of things. Uh, in Tai Chi, you're often standing on one leg, so that helps to build leg strength. Really? You're, you're rotating your waist a Are lot. Are you ready to do that? Lord, I don't <laughs> know. I think I have to take off my shoes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you're rotating your, your waist. You're also moving your ankles a lot. And when it comes to a fall, the first line of defense are your ankles. Your ankles okay. have to be strong and flexible. The okay. second line of defense are your hips, and they have to be strong and flexible. All right, Scott. Come on. Let's get up. <laughs> let's do it. All right. Okay. Well, Let me see here. All right, you got enough mic line? Let's see, okay. Yeah. I think oh, wait a minute, so. I gotta do my oh so honorable Scott Martin, <laughs> right? <laughs> when you can grasp the pebble from my hand, Shannon, you will have graduated. Oh, God, <laughs> okay. That goes back before your time. Uh, yeah, you yeah, right, I don't know that one. Okay, oh, okay. so now, well, you said they got a balance on one foot? Well, in oh, Tai Chi. Wait, I'm taking off my shoes, hold in on. In Tai Chi, we're always nice trying to line. balance our center of gravity within our basis of support. Okay, so now, I'm balancing. Now, what happens when people get old sometimes and they lose their mobility is they tend to be very conservative and they shuffle and they don't want to move their center of balance either forward and backwards or to side to side. Okay. So we're going to just do okay. just some simple exercises okay. to help us learn to be more comfortable Right. going forward and backward and side to side. Okay, All right. that sounds good. All right, so All let's right. just do some arm swings here. Okay, so arm swings. I'll get back so I bump All arms. All right. Okay. Now, do when I have you to go be stiff? back. Should I be stiff or should no, I be? No, okay. be, oh, be I should loose. Be like now, when you go back, go back on your heels. Okay. And then when you go forward, go up to the ball of your feet. Okay, okay. like that. All right. Okay. Back on your heels. Ball I have to look your at your feet. feet to do this. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Now, what I want you to do is to go to your toes. Really? You think I can bend over that far? Let me see. Don't okay. let your heels okay, come up. Okay. Don't let my heels come up. Don't okay. So go to my up. toes. Go all the way to your toes. All right. So you do it first, all and I'm right. going to follow you. So I'm going to go out okay. and back. Am out. I doing it right, Scott? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. okay. Now try to keep your feet flat on the floor. Okay. Keep my All feet right. flat on the floor. Now we're going to explore the sides of the okay. of our base of support. This so is let's where it just gets good. take out to the side, out to the side. Oh, okay. Out to the side. Now this is okay. This is okay. Right. So this is what we start with to get people to the point where they are comfortable moving their center of gravity to the far extremes of their base of support. Okay. And then we start teaching Tai Chi forms where they have to do that and uh, also where they begin to develop a lot of leg strength, balance, coordination, and endurance. Okay. Now, you also are looking for instructors. So before we go, if anybody wants to volunteer for stockings for soldiers, um, any of the RSVP, RSVP, RSVP programs and find out how you guys can get them, um, you know, volunteer work or to Tai Chi, what should they do? Okay, they should call our office and our office number is 302-255-9882. Um, and for location of the barrels for stockings for soldiers, they can just go to volunteerdelaware.org. Okay, all right, and, thank and you. Tai Chi instructors? They should also call? Yes, we're having a training in two weeks. We are still looking for people who are willing to learn Tai Chi. You don't have to have experience with Tai Chi, but you should have experience uh, teaching physical activity to older adults to have an understanding of what they are capable of doing in, when it comes to exercise. Okay, well thank you both oh, for being well, here. Love seeing you. Thank you. And great work. And I'm going to take some Tai Chi lessons from Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it was pretty good. You should have joined us. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about <laughs> exercising on camera. <laughs> you would have been fine, Betty. You would have been fine. But next time. All right. Chains Inc. when we return.
We are your Wilmington City Council, and we're also your neighbors. We're asking you to let us know about your community events, achievements, concerns, and issues. That's why we created a special email address that will connect you to all of us in City Council. Drop us an email about things going on in your neighborhood with Community Events 22 at WilmingtonDE.gov. That's Community Events 22 at WilmingtonDE.gov. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Chains Inc. provides an environment for inner city youth that encourages and supports them through mentors who have been active in the surrounding communities, recent college, gra college graduates, as well as young professionals. Erin Hutt is here now with updates and to tell us what's been going on with Chains. Hey, Erin. Good morning. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Fine. So when you first came on, we were just finding out what Chains was. So uh -huh. now, like, how are you guys doing? We are doing amazing. I'm very excited. We have our 40 under 40 ceremony this Saturday. Um, it's been in the works for several months since about February. So finally Saturday will be the day where we honor these awesome people. And you're honoring these people, the 40 under 40, because these are the people that have been helping you as far as mentoring the kids and everything like that? No, actually this is a community vote. Um, we I looked into Forbes listed a 40 under 40 and basically it's a list comprised of the top 40 uh, CEOs in the entire United States. Uh, right now, Mark Zuckerberg is number one. They rank them based on income. Um, and I looked into it, and everybody, every major city has one. So the closest ones to us is Philadelphia and Delaware Valley, but the Delaware itself doesn't have its own list. And um, I looked into it, and from doing chains, I've met so many people doing great things, and I felt like they should be honored. So I looked into it, and in 2008, Delaware Today Magazine did one, um, and they came up with a list. So I wanted to get the community involved, and I did, um, we put a, a voting process, and for two months, people nominated people. We got about 150 nominees, and we narrowed the list down to 40 based on um, directly contributing to the state of Delaware, um, whether they are residents or, you know, former residents, didn't really matter, but they had to contribute back to Delaware and we narrowed it down to 40 awesome people and I'm Great. excited. Great, now let me ask you something. Do you think any of the 40 people that you have identified, will you incorporate them in any kind of way to help you with the mentorship programs that change? Absolutely. Because these are great people that you did all this work to find out who these young leaders are in the community and what a better way to show some kids that you're helping, these are people from your own backyard. Right, uh, the people, everyone on the list, we've, we've actually had a private meet and greet back in July. And from there, people are working together. I know, um, again, it's the entire state. It's right. not just Wilmington or Newcastle County. Um, two of the Dover residents, Emilian and Drew Slater, are working together on doing some great things down Dover. And these two people, Drew works for the uh, senator, mm -hmm. and um, Emilian is a rapper and a poet. So they actually from little teeny tiny Dover, they've right. never crossed paths. But, you know, from being on the list, they've been featured in Dover Post and they've been able to connect with each other to do great things down in Dover, like a Stop the Violence. They're working on a Stop the Violence campaign together. So, you know, they, um, I'm, and we're, me and a million are working on doing a scholarship basketball game together. Um, it's a lot of people are working together and a lot of people are like, you know, however you want to use me, just let me know. And they're very open. So we are going to uh, make sure that our students are, you know, in contact with those people that are in their desired career path. Right, right, right. Now, what's going on with the kids that you mentor? How is that going? We, um, it's going good. They're, they're <laughs> exciting. <laughs> but we, um, we are taking, um, we're not taking a break, but we are making sure that our program is tight enough that it, it is able to 
work with every student because with before the 40 under 40 I only had access to mentors that I knew personally and people would ask for um, like a mentor in law and I only knew one attorney right. so now on the list we have Samuel Praxer and he's an attorney he has a practice on Union Street so it's easy for me to connect and now with the list I'm able to connect them to more people and and make them you know have them get mentors that are in the career paths not just random mentors. right so right it's more focused right and that is really good now now are you looking for I guess you're always looking for more mentors always right and, always. and you want people from all walks of life all walks we don't want to we don't really limit the the uh, mentors um, on certain career paths um, you know, even if you're a stay-at-home mom, everybody can learn from everybody. So we, we want to use everybody. Um, after the 40 under 40, we are going to do a 20 under 20 list. And that is going to be, we're working with the 87ers to do the 20 under 20 list. And, um, you know, the 40 under 40 just sets an example for the 20 under 20. So they can see that you don't have to do negative things to get on the front page of the paper. When you look at the paper, it's, it's always something going on. I know yesterday I looked at the paper and it was about the kids that, that um, beat up the, the mentally challenged man. Yeah, that was terrible. That was horrible. So I want them to see that you don't have to just, the only way to get recognition, you can do positive things to get recognized. So after we set an example with the 40 under 40, you have to lead by example. So that's why we led by example with the 40 under 40 and we're gonna follow up with the 20 under 20. Right, that sounds good. Yes, yeah. I love so it. So you guys have been busy. <laughs> very, very busy. Okay, <laughs> yes. okay. So now, how can folks sign up for mentoring opportunities with you? Um, they can go on the website, www.changede.com. Um, it's information on the website. They can also e email us at info at .com. Um, We're always out and about our social medias. Our website always shows like the next steps, like what we're going to be doing this week and next week. Um, and they can, they can email us and let us know that they're interested in being a part and I'll have somebody get in contact with them. And for 40 Under 40, if people want to find out more information about that, what should they do? It's on the website. It's on the website. www.changede.com. Everything is there. And if you tell people one thing that you want them to remember most about the 40 Under 40 event, what would that be? The um, 40 Under 40 is not a popularity contest. These people were elected by the community. Um, it's in the entire state of Delaware, which starts at Wilmington and goes all the way down to Seaford. Um, and that these people, everybody on this list, I stand by everybody on this list, everybody on this list has done some major contribution to the state of Delaware and they set an example for our youth that shows that they've come from different parts of the city, um, different parts of the state, different parts, some have come from different parts of the country and they all continue with their success to give back to our state, which is important. All right, Erin, I'm proud of you and good luck. And Thank you. And can't wait to see the 40 under 40. Yes. You got to come back and share it to us. Is, is there any way you're going to do this? Is it just a, is it alphabetical order or, you know, do you rank them top? To, no, you know? it's an alphabetical order. <laughs> <laughs> it's an alphabetical order. Keep it easy. It's not, it's not ranked. All of, everybody is equally important, so it's not ranked. It's just alphabetical order. Keeps it easy. Yes. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Cultural Affairs Director Kenny Briscoe and the Da Vinci Society big event when we return. I grew up in the housing projects of Cleveland. I didn't even know that life could be any better than it was. Education for me has been a way to get away from the agony of what was normal life. I want to be able to impact the community, not just look back on where I came from, but to reach back to where I came from and pull some people up with me. My name is David, and I am your dividend. Accidents happen. So do huge medical bills. 
Find out how to get health insurance coverage by visiting ChooseHealthDE.com. Uh, the Mayor's Office of Cultural Affairs, Kenny Briscoe, joins me now with a special guest to talk about a really exciting event that's coming up. And I already said there's no wine for the tasting. You could at least bought a little glass of wine with your Ron. Next year. Next year, I'm going to hold you to that. I do white wine. <laughs> and sweet. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah, well, look, I like a sweet wine. But I don't know. That's probably not the right way to judge a wine. So I will let Kenny Briscoe and Ron Orzi or Ronzio. Aranzio, talk to us about the Da Vinci Society big wine tasting event. Yeah, yeah. Um, I definitely want to thank Ron for coming on, and thank you, Shannon, as well. Uh, the Da Vinci Society holds an event, the Vendemnia Wine and Food Festival. It's an amazing event that happens in the city of Wilmington, and Ron is the chairman, and I'm going to let him speak a little bit about it. Well, uh, what I'd like to tell you is this is the 11th annual event. Every one of them have been held at Tubman Garrett Park, which is the perfect venue for the event that we do. Uh, the Vendemia refers uh, to the harvest of the grapes in Italy. So all the work's been done, the grapes have been collected, and people kind of chill for three or four days and, and, and they celebrate the harvest. That's uh, a good thing, uh, right? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, you know, it's and, right uh, that people chill for three or four days, <laughs> right? <laughs> Sometimes, some of them for three or four weeks. <laughs> 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 but uh, at any rate, uh, as I said, it's an event that we've done. This will be the 11th year. The city has been our primary sponsor for every one of those years. Uh, and it's really an all-inclusive kind of an event. So when our guest comes, they get to experience what it would be like if they were on vacation in Italy and some of the countryside piazzas or some of the villages uh, and uh, they get the opportunity to sample food from 25 of the very best restaurants in the state of Delaware. They get the opportunity to sample really good wines, white wines, red wines and blush wines from every region of Italy. Uh, they get four hours of professional entertainment mm -hmm. wow. that's very diverse and very you know interesting to people from basically three different generations that we that we get to attend the event. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, if we do it right, we put on a great event, we make some money for our charity. The Da Vinci Society is a 501c3 charity. And all of the money we raise, all of the money we raise, goes back into the community mm -hmm. by way of our family assistance grants, our scholarship programs, medical emergencies, and worthy cultural events that we support like many things that go on under City Fest. Wow. So we'd like to have the community out to support this thing. Uh, it's getting harder and harder uh, to do a, an event like this every year and, right. and make it you know, financially viable. Right. And the trick to it is uh, getting people to come, buy tickets, and, and on our end to go out and find sponsorships for it. So having said that, uh, we're really excited about this year's event. Uh, most of the, uh, the, the major elements of the thing are buttoned down. And what we can guarantee is a first class event that will shine a bright light on the city of Wilmington. Now, Ron, I have to ask you because you said, you know, this is a day where everybody, well, a couple of days where you get to try great wine yes. and food. So, you know, I know there's something like the wine should match the food or the food should match the wine and all that. And you've got a lot of good restaurants that are going to be at the event. That's, that's it. That, mm -hmm. That's the, the, you know, the basic you know, makeup of the event. It's wine, it's food, and mm -hmm. it's entertainment. Who are some of the restaurants that are going to be there? Well, Harry's uh, will be there, Harry's Seafood, and, and uh, Harry's Savoy will be there. The Brasserie from the Hilton. Uh, some of the very best Italian kitchens in the area, like uh, Restaurant Sofrito, mm -hmm. uh, will be there. Uh, we'll have uh, people doing, uh, you know, meat mm -hmm. samplings. We'll, there'll be fish, there'll be poultry, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, you know, Italians are, 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 are best known for, for eating really good handcrafted pot, pastas. Mm -hmm. So the, the people who get the opportunity. One of my guilty pleasures. Well, <laughs> uh, and it, there's nothing wrong with that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they'll, uh, they'll have the opportunity to, uh, you know, sample all those things for four hours. So now, it's, a hell, it's a heck of a value proposition. Right. Now, Ron, are you going to do like, you know, are you going to show people how to taste the wine, you know, where you swirl it in the glass Absolutely. and they clean a palate with the survey? We also, we also have one of the largest what we call handcrafted or homemade right. winemaking contests on the yeah. east coast really? so we'll have professional judges there and they're the folks people can talk to about you know if you're 
if you really want to know, you know, what the etiquette for drinking wine is under what circumstance, uh, they'll be they'll be glad to answer those kinds of questions. For myself, I uh, I drink what I like. Uh, you right. know, I don't follow the. You know, you only eat, drink white wine with fish, or you only drink right, red wine right, with beef. Right, I, right. I, I tend to drink what I like. Without <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I drink what I like too. I don't care as long as it's sweet. I just don't yeah. like it dry. And, uh, you'll, you know. you'll, you'll, I guarantee you, though, you'll, you can find all the sweet wines that you want there. Really? Yep. So I have a great Absolutely. time, won't I? You will. Wow! Well, you're right. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. And then I would like to point out also <laughs> that we we have uh, we have a deeply discounted ticket, ticket program. Okay through the city. So uh, uh, So what does this mean? So if you buy your tickets through the city, there's... Well, Ron has set something up because we really want to encourage uh, a larger audience and more people to enjoy the festival. Um, they have a great turnout, but we also realize that since so many folks aren't aware, that's why we're on the show today, we want to give everyone an opportunity. Those who work for the city have the ability to get a discounted ticket and you can buy them through the mayor's office. So you can just call the mayor's office at 576-2100, or you can email me directly. Uh, I'm on the city's website, kdbrisco at wilmingtonde.gov, and then we can offer you a discounted ticket so that you can have an opportunity to enjoy the festival. I went last year. It was amazing. Did I he mean, sample a lot of wine? Yes, That's I did. As I, re yes, as I recall, he, yes. he, he sampled yes. his share. There was a lot of wine <laughs> and a lot of great food, great food. You'll, you will encounter restaurants that you might not normally nowhere in Wilmington or in the, in the right. state and the food is amazing uh, last year they had this little plate that held your wine glass and you were really? able to go around and just get wow. food and sample wine and get more food and sample more wine and there mm -hmm. was music and the weather was perfect I mean it was it was a great event a great event God, so you'll be rolling out of there with all the food yeah, right. <laughs> well, there are plenty of chairs if you need to sit and take a respite between you the need samples. The you need to rest. Just stay away from the scale for a couple of days. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you better, there right? Contest, right? Isn't there we also do, uh, that's a, a signature event, is the what we the Italians refer to as gravy, it's spaghetti sauce, and that, that, that is a very big deal in, in, you know, the little Italy section of Wilmington. So we have, uh, you know, people come and, uh, uh, you know, bring their secret family recipes. And, mm -hmm. and our guests get the, the opportunity to taste all that as well. Mm -hmm. Really? So. And you mentioned that there's going to be music there. So what kind of music can folks expect? We'll have, uh, we try to make it as as appealing as we can to the people that are, that are our guests and the different age groups. For sure, we'll have uh, one of the finest operatic professionals in the Delaware Valley performing. That's a young lady by the name of Andrea Arena. She's done almost every vendemia that we've done. We'll have some rock and roll. We'll have some salsa. Mm -hmm. We'll have uh, some, you know, classic, you know, the, probably the, what they call the Great American Songbook mm -hmm. type stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, Sinatra's and hopefully, you know, some Lou Rawls stuff, and it'd be a good day. Oh, I like Lou Rawls. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Do you know what my favorite Lou Rawls song is? Did it, you'll never did it find. Have wine in the I do like Lady Love. No, you'll never find. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great Lou Rawls impression. <laughs> really, Kenny? I don't need any help from you. I got these two in here. Thank God Ron's not saying anything. Right? <laughs> so, Ron, if anybody wants to find out more about the festival or just about the Da Vinci Society in general, what should they do? Go to our website, which is www dot da vinci society of delaware dot okay. org okay and it's, we got all these bands so i'm sure there's going to be dancing oh Absolutely. yeah really oh, yeah. you going to dance i do i tend to uh, by the uh, by the end of the night i'm uh <laughs> oh, by the end of, well that dance is saved for me <laughs> uh, you, you have it you, you'll get one of them anyway but uh <laughs> But, 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 uh, <laughs> well, I mean, he's going to give me one, right? right. right. He's busy. Yeah. <laughs> he is busy. <laughs> I'll look forward to that. And w I want to ask you, so what if the weather turns out to be not so great, which we hope it is great? Well, you know, uh, yeah. we do have a, a rain date, which is the following week, which would be Sunday the 19th okay. at Tubman Garrett Park. But all of this information, everybody can find out from your website, and they could also and check the, the city city's website. website. Absolutely. Okay. It's on the city's website as well. So we want everybody to buy tickets. And the Dido website okay. as well. Okay. Well, it was a pleasure having you. No wine this time, but next year. I'll remember. And you remember <laughs> I like sweet. Sweet. Okay. And I don't want it out of a box either. <laughs> no, we, we don't do the boxes. You don't do the box no, mine? No, no. What? The bag, That's the latest you craze. Out of a bag. Out of a bag. The bag with a straw. Oh, oh, no. Did you say a straw? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You guys are making me laugh and cry, <laughs> which is a good thing. Thank you so much for Thank being here. Thank you for here. having us. We greatly appreciate it. And like to see you back again. Well, 
we plan on uh, this thing uh, going uh, on, uh, you know, permanently. We've made it through 11 years, and uh, I'd like to see it at least uh, go for another 10 years or so. All right. Which I'll be involved in it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All thank right, you, Kenny. thanks, Kenny. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sean. All right. Parks and Rec is up next when we return. <laughs> Child support clients, do you want your money faster? Sign up today to receive your funds electronically by either direct deposit into an existing checking or savings account or the new First Aid Family Card, a prepaid MasterCard account that is credited whenever a payment is made into your child support case. For more information, visit us online at www.dhss.delaware.gov backslash DCSE. Or you can reach us on the phone in Newcastle County by calling 577-7171, in Kent County, 739-8299, or in Sussex County, 856-5386. Thank you. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. Wilmington Parks and Recreation has programs for the entire family and Sean Baker is here with us right now to talk to us about what's going on at Parks and Rec, a lot of great things and you know I think um, one of the things I'm going to start off talking about and I want you to go a little bit into detail is the Safe Haven. I think that is a great program and um, it's really well utilized by the community. Yes it is. Our Safe Haven program is done over at Hicks Anderson Community Center in collaboration with the state of Delaware. The state of Delaware gives us a grant of X amount of thousands of dollars to put the program on. Uh, we have it three times, three, three days. We have Friday night from 8 until 10, Saturday from 12 until 4, and then Sunday from 11 to 3. Uh, we've been averaging on Fridays about 75 kids, on Saturdays about 40 students, and on Sundays about 40 also. Uh, last Sunday, we had 96 people come to our program from 11 to 3, and we thought that was great. It was hot outside. It is great. It was, it was warm. So, And we, we utilize eight different activities. We have the computer lab, which is open, and they can come in and get computer training. We have the swimming pool is open. We staff it with two uh, fully certified lifeguards. Our game room is open. Our teen lounge is open. The weight room and fitness center is also open, uh, and, and several other activities that we do. Uh, with the activity. It's just a great activity. The age is from 8 to 17, but if there are some adults that come in, we also let them come if they're, if they're in the weight room or they're in an activity that they can do. So it's just a great program. We fully staff it, uh, again, every Friday night from 8 to 10, Saturday from 12 to 3, 12 to 4, and Sundays from 11 to 3. So now that we're getting into um, out of the summertime and into fall and winter, what happens with the program? Well, with the Safe Haven program, yeah. well, well, it'll continue on. It didn't okay. start until July 1st, okay. and we're going to get an extension. We're supposed to go to September 30th, but we're going to do an extension. The state is going to grant us an extension, hopefully, until October 30th. Because okay. we want to do as many things possible as we can to keep the students and the citizens of Wilmington off the streets because we feel that if they're in a positive act activity, that'll make things much better. We also are, are taking a trip with them. We're taking them to a Phillies baseball game. Uh, thanks to the Phillies organization, they're donating the tickets. We're taking about 50 kids of that on the 27th. We're taking them to Dorney Park on October the 17th. We're also going to Stratosphere down here on the riverfront. 
uh, which is one date in middle of October. So you really do a lot to keep them engaged and it's a way to, you know, give them um, positive reinforcement activities. Um, with, I know you said that you have, you know, they're asking for an extension till October, but since the program is so successful, is there any chance that it would go year round? Well, and would you add different things into it? So now we're back in the school, maybe, um, I don't know, home, homework help or something like that. Are these different things that could be added in? Or it's like you got one thing at a time? Well, I think they're both good things. I, th I think what you said is excellent. If they would give us a grant, we would sure accommodate. But then in the late October, we open up our fall winter rec sites, which does the same thing through Parks and Recreation, through our Recreation Division, and through Youth and Families. So we'll have some tutorial activities uh, with Ms. Nicole Adams, the superintendent of Youth and Families. Uh, we'll collaborate with them, with our superintendent, Rashid Mustafa, and we'll collaborate to do the tutorial sites. We also have a food program. In our food program, we feed the kids also every night also. The state has given us about $3,000 to make sure the kids and some of the women that we have coming at the rec sites that are helping the kids are preparing the meals and preparing some healthy meals. We're trying to prepare just not hot dogs and hamburgers, but some good nutritional food so the kids are eating good because sometimes that meal that, that the student is coming to is the only meal that right. they're getting in that day. And we want to make right. sure that we feed them. We feed them every night. And uh, the state has been gracious to do that. But if they give us an opportunity to open up an, another grant, we would sure take it and move forward. Now in the 80s, I know when you come into these programs, you know, while you are offering a lot of activities and great things for these kids, you know, meals and, you know, fellowship with their friends and everything like that, there has to be some ground rules. I mean, there are some things that we don't want people doing when they come in or we want you to be aware of before you come, right? They have been very, very well behaved. I mean, they're going to be kids, and sometimes we as adults don't want kids to be kids. I think sometimes we need to remember that we were kids also. Now, there's a difference between being between A and Z, going outside the line and not doing what you're supposed to. But they've been well behaved, they've acted right, they've been appropriate. We've only had to get rid of one person the whole time. That's so good. they've been very well behaved, and they're very receptive to the game room, to the computer lab, to the weight room, to the basketball, to running in the hallways, and they're going to run in the hallways. We tell them to slow down, they slow down, but they're going to run because they're kids. I don't know why as adults we think that kids don't need to be kids. Sometimes we overstructure them and don't let them be themselves and open up. And, and we're not going to see this for 10 or 15 years down the road where they come back and they say thank you for what you did for me to get me started. And we've had that happen three or four times last week. Kids have come back now that are 35 saying, we appreciate the start that you gave us and the, the what you, attention you paid to us when we were younger. So okay. it's been a very positive thing. Before we move on, age ranges for these sites? Eight to 17. Eight to 17. Eight to 17 years old, but we will take them. We have a four and five year old in there because the older sister at 12 brings a four and five year old sister. So we're not gonna put them back on the street. We also have the uh, Cease Violence team uh, has come over and given us a couple lectures. They're going to come back this week and talk to the kids. And some of these stories that the Cease Violence people are doing along with our Deputy Director, Sean Allen, is some very interesting, earth-shattering stories. Now, are the Cease Violence team, are they a part of Parks and Rec, or is this a totally independent group? Well, they're a totally independent group, but okay. they're affiliated with Parks and Rec, but they're a, a, an independent group. But we asked them to come in, just like we're having Miss Delaware come in this weekend to talk to the young ladies about being Miss Delaware. Now, let's the Cease Violence team, so when they come come into the centers, what's, um, what happens? What are they talking about? They come in and, and they tell stories and they talk about some gun violence, some cease violence, how we don't want to, how people don't want to be shot, how people, things don't want to happen. And it's been a very positive, positive thing at this point. Now we won't see it until we go down the road, until we move, move forward. But they, they came in two weeks ago and they're coming in this Friday to end the stories. There's like eight or nine or 10 of them, and there's a, a several females, most of them are men, and they come in and just tell their stories, and they talk to the kids on a ground root level. And it's very, we took some pictures last week, and it's very interesting to see how those kids that we have, which are really between the ages of, I'm gonna say nine and 14, listen, grab their attention, understand what they're saying, and how the cease violence people are doing a great job of getting the message out. Now, are these people that are in the cease violence team are they people that have been victims or maybe the perpetrator? You know, and now they've changed, things are they've different. They've all been both. They've been, they've been, they've both. been both. So both. some okay. victims. They've also went through some of it. They know some people that have went through some of it. They have a very, very... So kind of like a scared street. Exactly, exactly. Their backgrounds are very, very long and very, very far. Um, and it's an interesting thing for me to sit there and listen to them because they've been through some things. They've been shot. They've been rape, they've been grabbed, they've been done a lot of things to, and it's a very positive message that they give about ceasing the violence, in, especially in the city of Wilmington.
You might, that's good. Um, go do, do they talk about furthering education and things like that? Yes, yeah, yes. Their, 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 their outreach is, is, is all over the place. Like if a shooting happens now, within 45 minutes, a cease, a cease violence member will be at that shooting. Uh, uh, they are all over, the, all over the city, all east side, north side, west side, south side. And uh, situation happened in Southbridge last night, and within 15 minutes, they were, they were over in Southbridge dealing with the situation. Okay. So they've, they've been very good for the city, and it's a positive thing. Uh, and going into some of our fall programs, we're having a fall tennis jamboree on October the 1st at Haynes Park, uh, which are going to be 4th, 5th, and 6th graders, about 45 kids. We're going into bowling over at, bowl around, over at First State Lanes on Saturday morning. Our fall winter rec sites will start opening up in October. Uh, that will also assist in, in getting kids in the program. And then our, our summer soccer program. Our youth and family division is doing the college tour with Nicole Torrance. You need to and sign up for that now? Yes, they need to, they need to go down and see uh, Parks and Rec now, go to give Nicole Torrance. Do you know what colleges? They're going to different colleges. I'm not okay. sure the exact, the exact ones. I know Frostburg is one of them. Okay. Uh, I think they're going to take a southern tour uh, down 95. Uh, Johnson C. Smith, Morgan State University, uh, uh, and, and, and some different schools going, okay. going down the south. But they can contact Nicole Torrance to find right, out five, that. Seven, six, three, eight, one, zero, and okay. find out about that. They're also going to start the fall food program uh, in the middle of October, which they fed last year over 37,000 meals in the fall. I mean, in the, in the summertime. 37,000 meals. That's, That's a, a lot, of, lot of people eating and a lot of people in the city of Wilmington eating off the, off the uh, food program. Is it, are these meals breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Some of them are breakfast, some of them are lunch, and some are dinner. It, it just depends on what site. Like some do breakfast and lunch, some do lunch and dinner, some might only do dinner, some might only do breakfast. Okay, but uh, you find that out from the you website find it out, too. Right, right. Okay. You go on the website and find it out. Sean, before we go, if anybody wants to get in touch with you or find out about the other programs at Parks and Rec, what should they do? Call 302-576-3810 or go on the city website. Our programs are, are on the city website. Um, or, you know, give us a call or stop by. And again, we always I always end in saying that if there's something that we're not doing, something that somebody in the community thinks that we should be trying a program or a different program. He does ask for this guy, so if we think there's something that they're not doing that they should be doing, what do we have? Let me see. I said javelin. No, we're not doing javelin. <laughs> I told you. We're not doing javelin because of safety. No. Archery? <laughs> no, we're not doing archery. You go again with that. No. We're not doing javelin. We're not doing archery. We're not, we're not doing no, we that. No. Lawn darts. That's great. Uh, that's a little soft. That. That, that, that's a little better. That, that's sword a little fight. better. That's a little I, better. I thought that was great too. What was? Sword fighting. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not doing that. We're, we're, right. that. we're not doing that. Well, we got to go, Sean, but it's oh, a pleasure. Okay. All Thank right. you. It's always a pleasure. All right, for everybody here at WITN Channel 22, I'm Shannon Harris. We'll see you next time. Thank you.